Studio Cloud. Um, if you have any questions at all about our Studio Cloud, getting into our Studio Cloud or working with the environment, uh, feel free to ask those questions to me in the Zoom chat uh, privately, and I can help address those one-on-one uh, -on -one with you. All right, so here we are excited to pass things over to Ben uh, and also Denikar to teach this awesome workshop on CICD. So Ben and Denikar, it is all you. Uh, hey, everybody. I'm Ben Straub. I'm from GSK, um, and I'm here with uh, Deniker. You want to say hello, Deniker? Yeah, hey, everybody. Um, and my camera doesn't seem to be working. We can see it. Can we see now? Yep. There you are. OK, great. Um, so I'm going to share my screen. And we will get going. Um, yeah, so we're real excited to teach this intro level workshop on CICD for, for our packages today for, for our pharma. Um, and we have some infrastructure we got to get in place uh, before we get started. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if folks ha have signed up for RStudio Cloud or GitHub, but that, those are two pieces that you, you, we definitely need in place uh, to get going. So, you know, this this workshop really looks to um, just teach some uh, implement eight simple CI/CD workflows for a really bare bones R package. So we we've really have, we we have a simple R package that we we we've developed on GitHub that will will show you how to copy over into your own personal GitHub area and take that R package and uh, we'll run some CI CD workflows on it and address the issues that come up in the CI CD workflows and, and work through them together. Um, you know, I think if you, for some reason, the infrastructure is just a little annoying to get set up, you know, you can also just participate in the workshop by just, just watching us work through the, the different checks that we're going to implement. And you know, just again emphasize on the simple. The I think the workflows can get really complicated real fast. So we've really kind of toned them down to 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 the bare bones, just like the R package, just to kind of you know showcase why we think some of these workflows are so important for for our packages. So just to give you what's to expect for the next three hours, uh, we're going to spend a little time just showing how to set up GitHub uh, in R Studio, probably like twenty minutes. Uh, if folks already have all this set up, you know, just you, you can sit back and relax for a few, for for a few minutes as we go through the the motions of setting all this up. Um, and then we're going to spend uh, five minutes to just discuss the workflow, uh, 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 or sorry, discuss the flow of the workshop. It it gets a little repetitive, but I think it, that's instructive in how we address the 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 things that the uh, the the errors and warnings that the workflows pick up as we as we work through. Um, and then we'll spend a few 10 minutes just discussion on why we think these CI/CD pieces are are important. Uh, and then for developing software like an R package, and a little bit about our, ourselves. And especially, I think for me, I've this is like a whole new world uh, to me because I'm just I was just a data analyst uh, a year ago, and I feel like I, I didn't really know a lot about the um, software dev world. Uh, and then the remainder of the workshop is just us running through the eight workflows. And we'll we'll take a five minute break after we implement the first two workflows, and then go from there. Uh, Dinaker, you want to add anything? Yeah, no. Uh, I think uh, this is going to be pretty. As as Ben mentioned, it's going to be quite basic in terms of what we're going to implement. We don't want to go into the murky details of doing anything advanced for now. So uh, you know. We're going to also conduct a few polls to sort of like gauge your uh, level of expertise. And based on that, we can we can um, sort of like customize the workshop based on your, your skill of expertise as well. So at this point, uh, yeah, as, as Ben mentioned, it's, it's going to be very lightweight. Feel free to participate. Feel free to watch. Uh, yeah, just enjoy, to be honest. Yeah, so this is going to be a fun workshop. And I and just to say, I will be jumping around a little bit from um, GitHub to the slide deck to our Studio Cloud. So just 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 to be aware. 
so so you know for the preparation for the workshop you know we're going to set up uh you know github to run these ci cd checks um and we're going to use github actions to, to implement those checks and we do have an RStudio classroom that um, Phil mentioned, and I think that link has been shared, um, yeah. but we'll share it again just in case. And then um, we'll do a quick overview of this of, of the package and try to point out some of the pieces where we're going to use the CI CD to, ch to check over stuff. Oh, forgot to meet that. Um, and then. Uh, and then we'll just, you know, sh give you a quick preview of like how the flow is going to work with 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 each um, uh, workflow. All right, so GitHub setup. So, um, so we have on the Pharmaverse uh, repo, we have a GitHub uh, template setup that has uh, all the components of an R package built into it, and we've set this up as a template. So you can easily copy. I'm going to do this with you. You can easily copy this uh, template over into your personal GitHub repo. So right now, so this is Pharmaverse uh, kind of meta repo that has a sub repo called CI/CD Workshop. And did that get posted in the chat? It did. I posted the slides. I don't know about the uh, repo. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I will post. I'll take care of that. I'll take care of that. So I'll post okay. all the links, etc. So uh, another thing to note: does anybody does everybody have a GitHub account, or do they need help setting it up to begin with? If if you do need help setting up the GitHub account, we can walk start a new GitHub account. We can set that up right now. Uh, so yeah, feel free to post in chat uh, or ping me directly, and we'll uh, we'll help you out there. And then you you also have to sign up for R Studio Cloud to get access to the classroom. Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and copy this template to my personal account. So to do that, um, I'm just here at this at the repo, and I'm just going to click Use this template. So this is just going to copy over all the all the components of this. Uh, this repository, but it's not going to bring along any of the commit history. Okay, and so I'm going to be listed as the owner. I could switch it to Pharmaverse, but you know, I think most people will just have themselves as the owner. But if you have any other uh, ownerships to other repos, you know, make sure it's just your personal repo. And uh, for my repository name, I'm just going to do CI/CD Workshop. And just make sure you mark it as public. Uh, GitHub will uh, the actions that we're going to implement today won't work if there's if you set the repo as private. Um, after you're done, if you want to get rid of the um, you know the repo, you can you can uh, you know just delete the whole repo. All right. So I'm gonna and I'm not gonna check include all branches. We're gonna work on that uh, in a minute. Okay. And then I'm just gonna sit, click, click create repository. And this this R package has a um, has is is sort of a broken R package that we're going to use CI/CD just to you know give the heads up. We're going to use CI/CD to fix all these little components uh, to the package. Okay, so you can see now that I've generated this uh, template from here, and it's got my GitHub username with the repository name that I you know picked. All right, and here is my our package. OK, so I just copied the template. We made it sure we set the template as, or the repository as public. And the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to create a new branch using GitHub. Uh, there's many ways to do this, but we're just going to use GitHub to create the, the, the branch called Devel. And to do that, we just t type in. Uh, so I just clicked on main, and then I typed in Devel. Ben, 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 there's a oh. question for uh, going over copying the template step again. So let's go through that again. OK. And let's slow down the pace just a little bit so uh, we can have our users sort of like um, catch up. Yeah. Sure, sure. OK, so I'm going to go back to the template repo. 
Um, and so the, the, the step was just to click use this template. And then to ch you can enter any repository name. I just chose CICD workshop just so I could keep it organized. And then I just left everything else as is. And then click create repository from template. Um, and then, so to go back to the one I just copied, so this, you should have, you know, your GitHub username slash the name of the repository you chose, and then it should say generated from, from here. Yep. All right. And and then next, we want to create uh, um, another branch. So it's going to be a direct copy of main at, the, at, the, at that moment when we copy it. And we're going to make all our changes in the development branch as we work on the R package. So to create the branch, I'm just going to type in devel. It's going to, GitHub is going to give me this option called create branch devel from main. And I just click that. And it's going to give me, it's going to default to the develop branch now. So you can see here I have main. Maybe I need to do a refresh. So I have main as my default branch and then develop as the one I'm looking at right now. So, and then um, you, you'll see here that this will change the two branches and that all the code is identical to what we just copied over uh, from the template repo. OK. So this next step, I think, is going to be, uh, it could be a little bit of a, of a tough one. So we're going to set up a personal access token. And we're going to use this token to allow GitHub and RStudio to talk to each other. So this is going to be like their secret handshake to pass information back and forth. So to do that, there's there's definitely some good documentation that GitHub has uh, developed about creating it. It's quite a lengthy read. I think um, I think if you can just follow the steps, I'll go through it uh, very uh, very slowly to set up your PAT. Um, then you can avoid having to read through all this stuff. If you already have all this set set up, then fantastic. So to set up my personal access token, I'm going to move to the top right corner of my repo where I have my little avatar. This is me and my son like 10 years ago. He was a lot younger. Uh, and go, I'm going to click on the drop down and click settings. All right. And then it's going to bring me to this you know, public profile. It's got a lot of. Um, information all over the place. And I'm just going to scroll down to the bottom. And on the left hand side, so I'm going to scroll down here to where it says developer settings. And click developer settings. And I want to make a personal access token. So remember, we're going to use this token to pass information back and forth between GitHub and RStudio Cloud. And they've just recently implemented this fine grained tokens beta and Tokens Classic. We're going to use Tokens Classic today. So I'm going to click on Personal Access Tokens and go to Tokens Classic. All right, and then I'm going to make generate a new token. And when I, just to say, I'm going to do a couple more steps, but then I'm going to move my, uh, move my screen off. When the token is generated, I'm going to move it off the screen so people can't see the token I've made. So you know, this is like a secret thing that you want to keep uh, super private, um, and it's just you know, you know, just so no one, nothing nefarious happens with your token. Um, so I'm going to generate a new token, classic, and then I'm just going to say CI/CD workshop. I'm going to make it a custom token and just have it end. Uh, tomorrow, but 
a lot of times I make my tokens like 30, 60, 90 days. Uh, but for today's, I'm just making it, uh, gonna, it's going to cancel out tomorrow. And there's a wall of choices and selections. But for today's workshop, you really only need the repo and the workflow set up. Is that correct, Deneker? That is correct. Just those two scopes should be selected for your, for your personal access token. OK. And then what I suggest, um, just to keep it easy, is to go ahead and open up like a, a word pad, or if you have like a little sticky note app, when, you're, when we generate your token, to just drop that in there. You can always make a new one if you lose it or, or something happens to it. Um, you can make a new one really quickly. So I'm going to scroll down to the bottom here, and I have this green button, Generate Token. And I'm going to click that button. But before I do that, I'm going to move this page off my screen. And I'm going to hit Generate Token. And you'll get a, um, a little warning, or not warning, but a little heads up, um, you know, in a uh, little heads up um, message. It says, make sure to copy your personal access token now. You won't be able to see it again. So GitHub will kind of obf what's a good word, obfuscate uh, the, the token. So I'm going to copy that to a Notepad++. Take that off the screen. All right, and hopefully I won't expose that, but I probably will. Um, and then once I'm happy with that token, I just keep that in your your notepad or your sticky, uh, or just on a don't I would say not write on a piece of paper because it's very long. <laughs> and then once you have that set up, I uh, just keep that in your back pocket. All right, and then I'm going to bring my GitHub account back over. All right, and then what's our next step? OK, so we're going to move to RStudio Cloud. So I would say you, know, you probably have this personal access token classic piece set up with settings, developer settings. If you just go in the top right hand corner, well, there's a couple ways you can do this. But uh, if you go to your repositories, so select on the drop down menu, go to your repositories and click on CI CD workshop. That will take you back to the repo. OK, so we got. Um, so we got our GitHub repo set up in our personal area. We made our personal access token, which is going to be used to talk to uh, GitHub and RStudio can talk to each other. And now we got to go to our studio, and we're going to go into the classroom area, and we're going to pull down the repo uh, into our area. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and log into our studio cloud. Mine's going to look slightly different because um, I use it um, for other things. So click on CICD R and Pharma Workshop. These are demo. So I can delete this and delete this. OK. So what you want to do is that once you're logged into, and I, I believe, um, oh, that's a good question, uh, Aaron. Yeah, so uh, if you have your own infrastructure set up, you can use what your local IDE. Um, if, if you know, uh, so yeah, totally fine. If you have your, you don't have to use the RStudio classroom. Uh, to, it just makes it a little easier if if something uh, gets a little uh, tricky, we can diagnose a little easier on RStudio Cloud. But if you're if you're comfortable in your own IDE, that's totally fine. Um, ben, I would say that the key thing there is that RStudio Cloud has a Git installed on the servers. Uh, so if you're doing it locally, you would just have to have a Git installation. Yes, yes. And then um, I think we need to share the link to the RStudio 
Yeah, um, we're good. We've done that on the chat box. Okay, There's some folks are yeah. saying they not. They oh, they don't have it. it. Okay. Well, yeah, we'll we'll add it. <clears throat> okay. All right, and then for me, so that this is the nice part about having our Studio Cloud um, enabled is we're going to create a new project, and we're going to create this new project uh, from a Git repository. And so to do that, um, it's just a couple a uh, couple steps, and this is just for um, you know using the HTTP S method. So when I click on this green code button here, it's going to have a drop down. It's going to have HTTPS, SSH, and GitHub CLI. So it defaults to HTTPS, and this is going to be the easiest one. So I'm going to click on this link, or just use this copy button to copy the link. So I went to code, HTTPS, and copy the link. And now I'm coming to RCU Cloud and clicking on new project, new project from Git repository. I just click on that and it's just control V or right click and drop that link into your URL for your Git repository. And then I'm gonna click okay. And it's gonna pull all that information from the, uh, the GitHub repo of, on our, our package and some of the other stuff that we've uh, prepared and pull up, pull all that stuff down. So I'm going to X this out. Ben, do you mind going through that step again? Just creating the project. On sure, after. sure. So uh, let's see. So I'm on my GitHub repo. And to I, I need to get a link from the GitHub repo into RCO Cloud. That link is going to be this green green code button here. I'm going to click on that, and it's going to give you three choices. And you want to use the HTTPS choice. That's the easiest one I found. And you know you can highlight it and control C it, or just use the copy button, and we'll copy to your clipboard. And then you just come over to RCO Cloud, and then do a new project, new project from Git repository, and just pop it in there. And it will it will pull it down for you. So let's see. So a lot of folks just did it. Fabulous. So I'm going to go into my CI/CD workshop. All right. And what's great is that you'll see the contents from the GitHub repo has all been dropped down into our little space, our little file windows here. So it's got everything set up. And so we're going to do a couple steps to get our studio uh, configured for us to use the, all the CI CD stuff. And let's go back to my slides. So start a new project in our studio cloud. We use the HTTPS link to get the repo. Now we're going to install the dev tools package. So for me, I always go to the package pane here in the right-hand side of the uh, bottom right-hand side of the, the IDE. I click on packages, and I just do install, and I just do dev tools. There's a, other ways to do this, but I find this one to be the easiest. And then I'm just going to type in dev tools <clears throat> and then click install. And it's a big package, so it's going to take, you know, 30 seconds for it to download. Uh, but we're going to use this package to help um, uh, to help diagnose some of the issues or fix some of the issues with the R package. Um, and then DevTools also makes some handy uh, uh, pieces to, uh, to kind of bring in the dependencies that you needed for your package. So we'll see that in just a second. So this is the command we're going to use. We're going to use dev tools, install dev depths or dependencies. And it's going to look at the description file of the R package and then pull in everything that's needed for the package. So 
Uh, and just to just to just to warn you, like when we get to the actions, it is going to take they they are going to take a some some of them might take like a minute, so there might be some awkward dead silence. Uh, we try to have some polls and, and some discussion uh, from from me and Deniker to kind of fill that dead space, but just you know there will be a little awkward waiting. So sometimes the actions fire off really quickly, and then sometimes you know they could take uh, you know a minute or two, which OK, so we got DevTools installed. It's a big package, and it has a lot of dependencies. Uh, and then for us, we're going to use DevTools colon colon and install dev dependencies. And I'm not going to fill anything inside the function, just going to leave it open and just hit Enter. And it's going to install um, the packages that are needed for our package, our CI/CD workshop pack package. And we're, we're, we'll go over the, what's inside this package. It's real, real basic, real bare bones. So it's going to pull all that stuff into our area. And while it's doing that, uh, this will what we'll we'll work on linking uh, GitHub and R Studio together. Uh, this is this one can be a little tricky, uh, especially for new users uh, with Git. Uh, but hopefully, it will all be successful. All right, and so it, you know, using the Dev Tools package, you know, we just installed all the dependencies needed for for our workshop package. Very. Um, uh, very uh, very bare bones package. So the next part we're going to do is uh, start getting GitHub and uh, our studio to talk really easily together. Like we just actually downloaded the, the repo, but if we want to make any commits and push uh, stuff back up to GitHub, we have to get everything um, uh, set up. Uh, so to do that, we're going to have to initialize your Git credentials. So part of that is going to be uh, knowing what your GitHub username is. Uh, mine is just BMS63. And then it's going to also need your email that you use to sign up for GitHub. So, um, so unfortunately, you can copy. What I would do is I would copy over the Git config stuff. Um, I guess, do we want to put this in chat, Deniker, or do we want to? Yeah, I'm just putting it in chat right now. OK. So I find that the easiest way to do this is to just make a, 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 a just open up a blank file and just put those two lines of code. This is, uh, this is not our code, but you can easily do git config global.username and then change it to bms63. And then my email address is Ben X. And the, the email that you're using here should be the same email that you're using for your GitHub account. So it could be a personal email, it could be a work email, but this is the same email ID that is associated with your GitHub account. All right, and then, um, so I'm just gonna clean this little area up. And there's two ways you can do this. Um, I'm going to just drop this stuff in the terminal. So I'm going to switch from console to terminal. And what I do is just copy this and drop it into the terminal, and then click Enter. So I've already configured my um, background before, so I'm, I'm not going to do this step. I'm not going to click Enter. But if you just take this, th those two lines of code, change your GitHub username to your GitHub username and your email, and then drop those two in. Uh, and then do notice that, um, I, don't, I don't know if it's, I use Edge uh, for better or for worse. Um, so it's, uh, I always have to, you can't control, C, control V into there. So you have to right click and paste them in here. That's if you're using a terminal. Sometimes I use the system command, which make, um, sends the, the code to the terminal.
but once you get that configured, uh, we'll do a test commit to make sure everything's working. So once, give everyone another minute or maybe 15 seconds to toy around with that. All right. All right, so you know the, the RCD IDE, super powerful, has lots of tabs everywhere. And we're going to move into the, on the right-hand side of the screen, we're going to move to the Git tab. And there's other ways to do this, but this is, this is the way we're going to follow today, uh, especially if you're new to Git uh, and this whole and RStudio IDE. But we're going to switch from Environment tab to the Git tab. And we're going to switch from Main to the Develop branch. So here on the right-hand side, I have a little, um, can I squeeze in a little more space? So I just zoomed in a little bit. So here it's saying that this is the main branch, but we don't want to work in the main branch. We want to work in the development branch. So I'm just going to switch to the Devel. All right, and you should get a little message saying you you switched to the new new branch Devel. I'm going to close that. All right, and I'm just going to I'm not going to save this. I'm just going to uh, delete this. And then, so I've switched to the Devel branch. Oops. And we're going to do our first commit. And so we're going to do this a lot today uh, for the next uh, uh, two and a half hours. So, and, and our first commit is that we're just going to we're just going to modify the README. And to do that, I'm going to go back to my files pane and scroll down. And we're going to don't worry, we're going to go over what's in this package in a few minutes. But you just want to find within the files the README.md file. So I can organize by name and click readme.md. And this is just, just a test commit. So I'm just going to you know, put in the date, so November 4th, 2022. Okay. And so you know, if, 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 you, if this is your first time to get using Git and GitHub, uh, you know, something to notice is that something's going to appear in here. So Git's going to notice that we're tracking a change, but it only does that once I hit save. And Git has noticed that something has been modified in the stuff that it's tracking. So you, I just put the date. You can put whatever you want. This is just to kind of get the, the ball rolling. So we do a commit. Oh, that was a little fast. Sorry. So I'm going to come over to the Git tab. And there's lots of little buttons everywhere. We're going to commit this uh, first locally. And then using that personal access token, we're going to push that up uh, to GitHub. All right, And then, the, then we'll really get rolling. So I'm going to do click the Commit button. What I always like about this is that the, you know, the Git, if you have like a lot of files showing up here, you can Git will say, like, or the RStudio IDE will help highlight the changes that you've made. So green being things that you've added, red, uh, things that you've taken away. So I'm going to do a commit message, just test commit. Spell that wrong. And then one thing I glossed over and went a little too fast is I did click, I did check this. Uh, there's other ways to do this on the command line, um, but we're just using the IDE. So I just clicked next to the readme did a commit message, and then I did commit. All right, and this uh, stores it, uh, this tracks it locally, but we want to push it up to GitHub. And to do that, I'm just going to click this push button. And it's the IDE is going to prompt me for my username for GitHub. So that for me is BMS63. And then next, it's going to prompt me for a password. And the password is the personal access token. So I'm going to grab my personal access token that I created and drop it in here. So I kept it on a little note, notepad. 
and I'm just dropping in here. You won't actually have to do this again once you do it once for this workshop. And then boom, it's gone. So we've we've just pushed it up to GitHub. And you can see here that this change that's being tracked, uh, you know, is synced up with you know both local and the remote. And if I come here and I'm in the develop branch, oh yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, GitHub already detected a change. Switch back to the Devel, and I should see a little change uh, right here. All right, so you know we modified the README, we clicked on the commit button, uh, it stages the README.md file, and we add a little commit message, just you know our test commit. We pushed it up to to GitHub using our personal access token. And we verified that it was completed on GitHub. So we're gonna we're actually gonna do this process over and over again when we use the GitHub Actions slash CI/CD to power through and fix our little issues with our packages. Okay. And I'll give uh, what do you think, Denigar? Like thirty seconds, just to let sure. folks. Okay. Yeah. So I just, we're just going to, the next part is going to be going over a little bit um, uh, what is in our package. Uh, when I did the commit, um, for my first time use for today, uh, when I did the push, that's when I had to enter in my user ID and as well as my um, personal access token. After, you're, after you've done it once for the today's session, you won't have to do it again. Uh, if you log out and log back in, you will have to, 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 to use the personal access token again. That's what I've found. There are ways to store it, so you don't have to, to, to do it that way, but we're not going to go over that. Ben, do you mind uh, showing exactly where the personal access token was used in the within the uh, repository? So what you can do is... Um, yeah, so you should be able to attempt to re-authenticate re somehow, or maybe not, never mind. So yeah, people are asking where the authentication was used or the authentication token was used. It was basically where you create the commit and you attempt to push. So when you're attempting to push the commits, you are basically asking GitHub to receive your commits and GitHub needs to know who is pushing it and who it is that is attempting to push to their server. So at that point, it's going to ask you for your username, which is your GitHub username. And then it's going to ask you for your password. But the password is not your GitHub password. It is, in fact, your personal access token. So that's where within our studio, when you hit the push button, it'll prompt you for the username and then ask, ask you for the, for the personal access token. So Dagmara, I think it might be because your uh, personal access token might be incorrectly configured. So back when we created the personal access token, we had to enable two scopes. So one thing to note is that we create a classic personal access token and we create a set of scopes against that particular token. So we need to enable the repo scope as well as the workflow scope. So yeah, uh, Ben, if you wanna show exactly how that personal access token was created, so yeah, so Ben went to his profile on the top right, right? So on the top right corner, there is this little avatar and then he clicks on that, clicks on settings, okay? And then on, on the left, on the sidebar, you'll see a bunch of options. And towards the very bottom of that is developer settings, okay? And so here within that same pane, you'll see on the left, personal access tokens. Now there's two options. There's one called fine grain tokens. That's what you don't want. You want the classic tokens. So let's click on that. And then here on the top right, you'll see generate new token, right? Click on that. Again, here, don't say generate new token beta, say generate token classic. This is important. And now here you can set a particular name for the token. Uh, yeah, set whatever name, set whatever expiry, expiration date. Uh, I think Ben set it to, to one day. And then this is, this is the most important things, your scopes. You should select everything under repo and everything under workflow. So there's only one option for workflow, but everything for repo should be checked and everything for workflow should be checked. Okay. And then towards the very bottom, 
once those two are checked, you can say generate token and that should generate a token for you. Let's, uh, let's give it maybe 10 seconds until people finish that step. And then uh, one piece that could get come up the works is initializing your Git credentials. That's a one-time thing you need to do as well. Um, maybe could you post that again in the chat, um, Deneker? Yeah. And that needs to uh, be run in the terminal to set up those credentials. There's other ways to do it. That this is the, the, the way uh, we found uh, that it works the best for for like a workshop. All right. So, but I should I should probably keep moving. Okay. So just to just to give you a brief overview of the R package we're going to use today, you know, it's just a dummy package uh, we created for this workshop. You know, it has uh, it. The only real import is the lifecycle package, and then we suggest uh, these additional packages down here. Uh, which, when we did the Dev Tools install dependencies, that piece that loaded all these packages for us, and uh, um, so we should be good to go. So that's what's you know that's just the description. Uh, this is so, and this is just a description file for the for the package. So that's just rendered on the. Uh, on the slide, the slide deck, so you can see it here. It's the same stuff. Um, and just to give you a quick, um, you know, little overview of what's in the package, you know, we just, you know, have one .r file with a couple double dummy functions inside of it. Um, we also have uh, a folder called inst, which has a word list, which we're going to make use of uh, for some spelling checks. Uh, you know, we have a news.md, which is just the change log, you know, to show how things are changing within the package. We have some generated man files already, and we also have some, you know, dummy tests that we've created. Uh, so we're actually going to use, I think, almost all of the package today in our exploring the CI CD checks uh, for today. And then the, you, you kind of got a taste of it with, you know, we, we modified the readme and we pushed it up. You know, that's going to be kind of the rigmarole for, for today. Um, oh, this never renders. All right, let's see if I can zoom out just a little bit. We were experimenting with these uh, mermaid diagrams, and we found that my edge doesn't work that well with, uh... oh, yeah, it's not zooming out. Anyways, we were trying to make a fancy diagram to show how to how, how we're going to move through here, but we're going to. When we get into the CI/CD work, and I say CI/CD and workflows, those, those, we kind of, those, I'm gonna, those are interchangeable words. We're gonna just kind of discuss what the purpose of the workflow, kind of like why we think it's important, especially for our packages. Uh, we're gonna create the workflow, which is essentially just copying um, code that we've we've created that we'll go over uh, for you guys. We're gonna um, copy that into a, a special folder called .github workflows. We're going to push that workflow up, and we're going to let GitHub identify the issue in our package, which we could have done locally, because uh, these are very simple fixes. But we, I think it's you know good to to, to see these uh, firing off. We're going to observe the feedback. We'll fix the feedback on our studio and push it back up to GitHub. Uh, and then you can't see it here; it's cut off. I'm sorry, uh, but we'll kind of discuss uh, you know that that the implementation process a little bit more, and then we'll do it again. And we'll do it. We'll actually do it eight times. And you might be asking, you know, well, so, and, and so we just spent a lot of time uh, setting things up. I'm hoping, you know, we have a good landscape uh, for the rest of the workshop. Um, and, 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 you know, as people are tr trying to configure things, you know, we'll just go over a little why we think CI CD is important for, for an R package. Um, for, from my experience, I work on a package called uh, Admiral, which is for creating Atom data sets, which is specific to a, a part of the pharmaceutical industry. And on this package, we have many different contributors. Uh, and being able to check the contributors' work is, is important. And doing that manually is exhausting. So having these CI CD checks can be real powerful to help um, uh, ensure, ensure the integrity. And this leads into that you're also, you, you know, you want to check to make sure. Uh, your user base 
you know, they could be using different versions of R, different versions of packages, different operating systems, and being able to have CI CD checks that are enabled to, to, to check those that your package works on Windows and Mac and Linux and all the flavor of Linuxes, and that it works on different versions of R. Uh, it can, becomes really important for you know the success of your package. Um, one thing I do a lot with the Admiral package is I review a lot of pull requests. So people write new functions, update documentation, and having uh, CI CD checks that help assist me in my review quest and in my reviewing of the pull request is, is such a powerful tool. Uh, it allows you to catch bugs. As a contributor to Admiral, you know, sometimes I maybe don't run my local checks and I, I just forget I'm in a hurry, but then I push up my code and GitHub is like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Like there's a bug in here. Um, style is really important. Uh, I find that, uh, you know, and then if you have a cer certain convention that you want people to use, uh, it's sometimes hard to, you know, get everyone on the same page. And if you have a way to enforce that, um, you know, through automation, it can be very powerful. And then also, you know, with our packages, especially in the open source, you know, you want to be able to measure your test coverage. If someone implements a new feature, you want to make sure that your the testing is covering that, and you can automate that. In uh, my experience with um, Admiral, like I was a data an or I still am a data analyst, and I came to Admiral a year ago, and I've been learning a lot about this CI/CD stuff, uh, and it's just such a powerful uh, set of tools to use to to build additional software. Uh, so I. For me, it's like a new, uh, a new world. But I'm excited, you know. And that's why I wanted to teach this kind of workshop because I do think that this is important for us to start embracing, especially as a data analyst or, in my field, we're, we're called clinical programmers, just specific flavor of data analyst. Um, oh, and there was the last one about keeping documentation up to date, which is always important. Um, so, Dinneker, do you want to say anything about your your background, real quick? Dinneker is definitely the uh, CICD person. Yeah, my, my GitHub username is CICD guy. Uh, so I, I basically help out with CICD wherever it's needed across a variety of products. Admiral is one of them, as been mentioned. So we also have a bunch of uh, Farmaverse-related uh, projects, such as Nest, and a few statistical engineering projects, like you probably heard of these, MMRM, RBMI, and other things like that. Uh, which all leverage CI CD to basically maintain the integrity of the package and test against, as has been mentioned, various versions of our operating systems, et cetera. So a lot of these packages are submitted to CRAN. And before we submit to CRAN, this is sort of like a sanity check to make sure that we are doing what CRAN would do so that our packages are not rejected from CRAN or Bioconductor at some point. Uh, so we are, yeah, so this continuous way of monitoring the integrity, the, the functionality of the package, uh, without breaking usage and other things like that is is an imperative part of using CI CD. Uh, but yeah, uh, I think it's it's a very powerful DevOps uh, tool. Uh, and what we're going to see today is going to sort of uh, we, we're also going to like walk you through like GitHub action specific things, wherein we'll we'll talk about what each of those lines of code mean in the CI CD workflow. So yeah, we'll get to it in a bit. All right, so. We got everything set up. We got a little bit of about what, you know, why we think this CI CD stuff is important for our packages and a little bit about us. And, um, you know, the eight workflows we're going to implement today. Uh, one is a, the classic RCMD check. So we're going to implement that. That'll be the first one that we do. We're going to uh, implement a link checker. So it will, uh, uh, an action will, will run through and verify that all your URLs and links work. Um, we're going to also go over one that loops through your package and checks your spelling. Uh, we'll implement a linter. We're going to have an action that goes through and checks that all your documentation is up to date and, and rendered properly. We're going to have an action that goes through and identifies um, the style of your code that you've chose to, um, to, to, to implement and make sure that you know if you're doing a contribution that it adheres to that code style. Look at test coverage. And the last one, this is not so much a uh, uh, like thing that we're going to fix, but we're just going to show you how to 
take your R package and use your personal repo to just publish this uh, whole package as a separate um, uh, package down site that you can link out to. And these slides actually will render uh, with it as well. There's a question on the chat, Ben. What What is a linter? You want to take that one, Deniker? Yeah, OK, I'll take that one. So yeah, linter is a, a way to statically analyze your code. So it is a way to determine if there could be potential bugs or issues which could lead to downstream errors. So the way it works is that a linter would typically parse through your static code without compiling it to determine if there are syntax errors, typos in actual code, or you know, uh, we'll get to something like cyclomatic com complexity in this workshop as well. Um, but those are examples of what a linter would do amongst many other things. It, it also makes sure that your variables are matching a particular style. Um, your, your, uh, you know, if, for example, if you have a missing parentheses or a missing bracket, a linter would be able to determine that on the fly. Um, hopefully that, yeah, that answers your question. Thank you. Okay. So first workflow, RMCD check. Um, so we're going to use, you know, like we said, we're going to use GitHub to, to run our check on, on our package and why we think this is a powerful way. So with, with the, um, with the Admiral package. You know, we run uh, Admiral on, we run a check on multiple versions of R, so 4.0, 4.1, 4.2, uh, to make sure that it's all, um, uh, like any, any updates we make in the code, we know it, it successfully runs on all those versions of R. Um, also, if, you, if you're not aware, you know, like as packages, other packages are continuously updated across, you know, CRAN or Bioconductor, you know, we want to take, we can take snapshots of those different packages and that our package depends on, like Admiral, and run that, uh, run that a CI CD check on that to make sure the package runs um, successfully. And again, different operating systems, you know, does it run on Windows? You know, issues on Windows, no issues on Mac, uh, no issues on, on Linux. Um, and then, you know, for me, it's, it's, a, it's a, when I do a pull request review of someone's, you know, fixing a bug or doing, um, implementing a new feature, you know, if if their code is breaking on the on the RCMD check, like I already know, like that's a big red flag, and you know, obviously I'm not going to pull that into the code base, but that's something for a contributor. Like like I shouldn't even have to go and 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 alert them to it. They can get that feedback continuously and see like, oh, this fix I made is breaking. Uh, they can start looking how it's breaking. So our RCMD check workflow is just 17 lines. We're going to use this in just a minute to check our package. Um, Deniker, do you want to highlight some of the, the features of the code? Yeah, yeah. So, so the reason it's 17 lines is because it's minified for the workshop. In reality, it might be much bigger uh, than 17 lines. And we sort of like compressed it uh, to 17 lines just to make sure that it fits on the slide to begin with. And also that it does the job uh, for the for the very minimal R package that we have, right? And I'll walk through line by line, right? So like we have in a typical GitHub Actions workflow, these are everything is in the YAML uh, format. So YAML is yet another markup language, uh, which is a general format that are used for a lot of configurations. So think of your workflow as a configuration file, which is telling GitHub to consume it and perform certain actions, right? So yeah, the name the name is obviously the name of the workflow. So it's RCMD check, and then there is an on keyword which says which basically talks about what events the workflow should be running on. So in this case, we're running it on a pull request, but only if the pull request is against the main branch, right? So we'll, we've created a develop branch right now in a repository, but we're gonna create a pull request against the main branch to actually trigger this workflow. Then we've got a section called jobs. So we can have one or more jobs per workflow. There's the way uh, in GitHub, for GitHub Actions, one file is representative of one workflow. And there can be one or more jobs within the same workflow. In this case, we only have one job. We have a job called check. That's the name of the job, which runs on a specific machine. So Ubuntu latest is getting a Ubuntu Linux instance, uh, which GitHub itself provides. So there is an actual virtual machine running in Azure cloud that GitHub uses. And we're saying run this particular workflow on Ubuntu. But 
On top of that, we have a container keyword on line seven, which says run this on a Docker container. So those for those who are familiar with Docker, uh, we're just using something from Docker Hub. And for those who aren't familiar with Docker, think of it as a contained environment, which contains your, uh, your R installation, a bunch of other software that you need, which runs on top of a VM. So it's a slightly more abstract version of a VM, but it's not really a VM. Um, yeah, and so here we're using the Rocker image. So Rocker is another uh, organization on GitHub, which is responsible for creating a bunch of R-based images. So like here we're using Tidyverse, which has a bunch of uh, pre-installed software uh, just to speed things up for us, okay? And then we have lines eight to 17, which walk through the various steps, right? So a lot of so a lot of the stuff you'll see in future workflows is boilerplate from line one to seven. And then the steps are where the real, the real uh, content is, right? So yeah, step number one is to actually check out the repository. So we have to specify this every time we run in, uh, in GitHub Actions. Then we install dependencies. This is the same step, line 12, what you, what you did uh, on your RStudio Cloud instance to actually install the packages dependencies. We're running the same thing on GitHub Actions. Then we're building the package. We're running RCMD build. And finally, on line 17, we're doing an RCMD check uh, with the no manual flag because we don't have PDF related tools that are installed on Tidyverse, which will build a PDF manual. And we don't really need it for this workshop. So that explains like, a, that's a very brief and simple way to do it, right? So you install the dependencies, you build your package and you're an RCMD check against it. That's all this workflow is doing. Um, yeah. And I think we'll see this in action pretty soon. Why shell on line 13, but not on other commands? Good question. So we're actually, uh, the way GitHub runs particular commands is on the, on a, on not a bash shell, but on the, on the standard shell that's available on um, the bond shell, the bond shell, which is available on, on Linux systems. So like line 15 has RCMD build, which is actually running within the shell. But on line 13, we're running it within an R script shell. So R script is another interpreter, which uh, is used for R related, R related commands. So line 12 is running an R command on the R script shell, as opposed to line 15 and line 17, which are running on the Unix shell. Okay, good question. All right, so, and now we're gonna, we're gonna implement this uh, workflow. And to do that, there should be in your R package file um, file section. So I'm back into the RStudio Cloud IDE. There will be a um, a folder called presentation. And if I click on presentation, there will be a subfolder called workflows. And that file that Denica was just uh, was giving a good overview of is rcmdcheck.yml. And if I open that up, you can see, you know, it's the same content that we just were going over in the slide. And what we're going to do is we're going to move this uh, workflow from the presentation folder. We're just going to copy it over to another folder called .github. So you might, I don't know, if you don't see the dot folder dot GitHub, you might have to switch. You might have to uncheck show hidden files. I don't know if it disappeared. Nope, it's still there. Okay, so we don't need to worry about that. So it should be. You should see two folders: presentation and dot GitHub. What we're going to do is we're going to go into presentation, into workflows, and I'm just going to do. You know, as as there is, there's lots of ways to do it. I think this is the easiest way. I'm just going to checkbox the rcmd check.yml and use this. There's, there's a sprocket up here. And I just click and just say cop, copy. Oops, sorry. Copy to. All right. And I'm just going to use the, the file path to nav navigate back to project.github workflows, and I'm just going to hit save. So I just, you know, I just checkbox the RMCD check, went to the sprocket, the more file commands button, clicked on that, 
I did copy two. And then I just click project dot GitHub and copied it in here into that folder. So a dot GitHub is a special folder for, for, for GitHub. All right. And then because we copied, we just moved something around inside our project, Git is tracking this. It's like, oh, you just moved, you just copied something to another folder that wasn't there before. And it's saying, hey, like, you know, this is something you want to be tracking. And yes, we do want to track it. So we're going to use the, you know, the same uh, buttons again. We're going to click commit. And I'm just going to stage it with the checkbox. And then I'm just going to type in first workflow. All right. And notice how everything is green, you know, because nothing, nothing, you know, it's the first time this file has been, uh, been, uh, been created in this area. And then I'm just going to click commit. All right. And then I'm going to push it up, uh, up to GitHub. So I'm going to click push, and it's going to go up there. So to get this workflow to, to, to engage, we're going to have to create a pull request. So if I go to uh, back to my, um, my repo, um, oh, sorry, I should do it. Um, so if I go up to you know, my avatar, go to your repositories, and go back to my CI CD workshop. You know, GitHub's already tracking, like, hey, you made a change. Do I want to do a pull request? And I do. So if you don't, if you don't see this uh, button, that's okay. You can also just create it manually by clicking on pull request. Um, it, it sometimes it takes a, a second for it to sync up. So if you don't see that button, just click pull request and and, and um, maybe I'll just do that anyways. So you know it's giving me that option again, compare and pull request. So for, for me, I'm just going to click new pull request. I'm going to change this. So this is the base branch. I'm leaving that as main. And I'm changing the compare branch to devel. All right. And then I'm just going to create pull request. And you can, you can fill in uh, a bunch of stuff here. We're just going to leave this as is. Just the standard text um, that Git, uh, GitHub puts in, which is just the title of the branch for right now. And I'm just going to create the pull request. All right, and you can see here the two things I've made, the two changes I've made inside um, Devel was that simple test commit with the README. And then I did my first workflow. And actually, before I even could get down, so GitHub has already engaged the RCMD check. And this check, because it's installing the rocker image, does take a, a minute to, to run through. But you can see here with this you know, little, little yellow button spinning around, you know, it's, it's firing off. If you want to get into the knit and gritty, if you go over here and click details, you can see um, you know, the job was set up. And then. You know, it's initializing and it gets a little, you know, makes your eyes go a little crazy uh, as it's firing everything off, but it's initializing the container. It's going to check out the repository. It's going to install the dependencies. So all this stuff that, you know, you saw on the slide, it's firing all that off. And then it's going to take, uh, you know, a, a little while to um, install the dependencies. It should fire off the package pretty quickly. But while that while that's firing off, do you want to throw out a poll, Deneker? Because it will it will take a yeah. minute or two. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's do a quick poll. Um, Phil, do you have the Slido stuff, or should I just share it? <clears throat> yeah, I got it. Just give me two seconds. Uh, I'll post the information in the uh, chat box. Sure. But yeah, let's uh, let's every let's give everyone a minute until they got to the point where they see check package failing, and we can just do a quick poll and and investigate why that is happening. Yeah, thanks, Bill. Yep. It's uh, coming across now, so I, I'll put a link in the chat box. I also put the uh, the ID as well as the passcode that you'll need, so you'll see that now. Um, and then, Denikar, if you want, you'll need to go in as the uh, as the owner and turn on the uh, the poll that you want them to take. 
Yeah, so it looks like you just turned on. What is your level of expertise with CICD? Perfect. Awesome. All right, I think we're good. Yeah. If anybody has trouble accessing that, just let me know in the chat box. Let's give about 30 seconds for people to fill out that poll real quick. So yeah, so we, we we don't know like if you know if you're following along um, at home or you know at, at work, um, you know sometimes the action this actually fired off incredibly fast um, when we were testing it out uh, the other day. You know, it took a little while to build, so you know we're hoping that you know if the action is still running, if you could go to the poll, fill out the poll. But if you're you know just waiting, just you know just give us a couple seconds. Hopefully everyone can catch up and get on the same page. Uh, and Dinegar, I don't have it set up so I can see the results. So I don't, yeah. when you when you when you feel like you want to uh, yeah. talk about it, you can just jump in. Let's just wait a minute or two. Okay. Or actually, you know what? Yeah, you can continue with that because with the rest of this, so we can investigate why the check failure happened now. And you might, uh, I got a few questions. You might uh, just see if you can repeat that last part, um, if that's okay, just the steps. Uh, with putting the workflow into the folder? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe not doing it, but just kind of showing people. Um, oh, we got the workshop or the, uh, the file in the folder, I think is fine, but kicking it off if there was some steps after that. Oh, uh, yeah. So uh, the way it kicked off was that um, because how we have the, the, um workflow set up it only activates when we do a pull request into main so as soon as we did as soon as i did a pull request you know did a new pull request and i did uh devel and it's because it's already i already have one set up that's identical it's not gonna you know let me make a, a new one that's the same thing but i just do a pull request of devel into main and because the workflow is set up you know, to activate when you do a PR or sorry, a pull request of develop domain, it knows to fire that. So if I go into pull request and you can see here, I already have a failure. Um, so that's something to note is that I, I want my green check mark. Yes, failure is expected. That's a good, that's a good thing. <laughs> so GitHub is saying the way we've designed our action is that there's something wrong with our R package uh, that we need to, to address. And if I go into details, uh, and it will quickly check, take me down to uh, where the thing is failing. And what we did is we just have a silly uh, test that we've designed in a way to fail, just to showcase to you guys how the, the check is, is going through. Just like how you would do a local check on your R package, um, this, uh, this is doing this check on GitHub. And it's seeing that your test is failing, which you know wouldn't pass, um, you know, a successful package deployment. Uh, and it here, you know, it's a little hard to see uh, with the black black background, but you can see here that the test failed. So we want to fix that. That's what we're going to do right now. Is we're going to go in and uh, and fix that failing test. All right, and so. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I got to find where that test is located. So inside the test folder. So I'm back in my RStudio cloud. I'm back in project. And I'm back in test. And if I click on the test folder and go into test that, there's only one file test hyphen hello dot r, and we want to we want to see uh, what's what's going on here. If you don't know, sorry, and we didn't we didn't really cover this because it's just a silly package. But we do have a couple functions. One function is called hello, and uh, it might be useful to just show that real quick. So we have a hello.r file, and the hello message or the the hello function just spits out a message called "Welcome to the R Pharma CI/CD workshop." And if I want to um, 
you know, load that package and see what, you know, see that function in action. What I always do is I do dev tools, load all. This just loads the package in its current state. And if I type hello, you know, it makes this message here. So hello just makes a message called welcome to the R Farmer CI CD workshop. And, but the test we wrote, uh, is failing, and we got to figure out why it's failing. So, uh, a couple of things I can do is to check it locally. I can just run the test, and it looks like we have the expected match as "Welcome to CI/CD Workshop," but the actual function is spitting out "Welcome to the R Farmer CI/CD Workshop." So that's what we want. So there was obviously a typo made. So I'm just going to um, just type in. So welcome to the r slash pharma CICD workshop. And let's just save that. Let's run the test. All right. So it was just a slight typo I made when I was uh, you know, frantically trying to get this uh, update made. And now I've just fixed it. So now my tests are passing. So because um, I've made this change in the, uh, in, in the file, if I go to Git, you know, Git is tracking this change that I've done something uh, new or added something new. So I'm going to do the same, same process again. Commit, click on the stage. And here, I always, I always love this. And I think this is a good thing to, 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 to you know, if you, if you not use Git very much or, or GitHub, you know, you can see the change that was initiated on, the, uh, on that line. So you can see here that R Pharma has been added. OK? So fixed. So I'm fixing my test. That's my commit message. Um, it's a whole. It's a whole other world about commit messages. Um, we're going to keep it simple. So fix the test. I'm going to commit it and then push it up to GitHub. And so what's going to happen is I don't need to make a new pull request. I don't actually need to do anything. Is that um, depending where you are, if you just go back to your pull request, you can already see the change that I've made on the test. It's the, the pull request is already detecting, you know, or the develop branch has been changed. The pull request is saying like, hey, or the workflow is saying, hey, there's something changed. Let's rerun this action again. And it's initialized this action. And it's going to run through the same steps all over again. And what we want is a green check mark and for it to have passed. So so it's re so it's reinitialized the um, the action and it's going to run through that check all over again. So locally we know when I ran the test, it flew through and you know I'm pretty confident that it's going to pass through. But I never know there could be a little uh, you know other little mistakes uh, that have been made. Um, Deniger, do you want to? Any feelings on the poll or uh, findings on the polls? Yeah, uh, yeah. It looks like a lot of people definitely have a lot of our experience. So we can. Um, uh, there's, there's, yeah. I think looking at the results, it looks like we have you know a lot of beginners and a lot of intermediate folk and a lot of experts as well. So I think depending on the, uh, I think the pace of the workshop is pretty, uh, pretty well well defined to the to the audience. So. Unless people feel like we should go slower, please please shout out. Right, if you want us to go slower, we can. If you want us to go faster, we could. Uh, question from Ravi: How did you restart the pull? Uh, Ravi, I think we we don't restart a pull request. What we do is we push a commit. So what we did is we went into our Studio Cloud. Uh, we made the correction. And we committed that correction and we pushed it to the devel branch. So the devel branch is stationary, right? And the pull request is also stationary. The only thing that is changing right now is the commit that we just pushed to the devel branch. And so GitHub realizes that you pushed a new commit and it re-triggers the workflow 
And you can see that it's a green tick now. That means we have successfully remediated the issue that we discovered from the previous workflow. Okay. Is that the default behavior that the commit gets added to the P PR? Yes. So the PR is actually different from the branch. So what you're doing is you're pushing a commit to the branch, but not the pull request. So what you're doing is a pull request is like a placeholder to say that I'm proposing changes from branch A to branch B. And if I push changes to branch A, those are all the commits that I'm seeing here. So as, ben, as you can see on Ben's screen, there's you know test commit, first workflow, fixed test, etc. Et these are happening on the branch. So here we're saying the changes we're proposing in branch devel, we're pushing into main, and the proposals are being reviewed in a pull request. That's what's going on. So we just did our, our first successful workflow. So we got seven more to go. Uh, I think I think we'll move through them pretty quick, but I think they all get a little bit more interesting as we as we move. Um, so our next workflow is going to be checking uh, links and URLs. And you know why we think this is important is uh, if you cite any resources in your function development, like maybe you have a, a way you've you've implemented um, a, an algorithm in a function, and you want to cite a resource or a paper on why you did that. You know, you want to make sure that citation stays up to date. So, you know, maybe that um, company changes their um, uh, their base URL, or or that it goes um, 404 on you. Any, any of these issues, you know, it, this link checker can help uh, satisfy that. Also, within um, the stuff I work on, you know, sometimes we break our own links on accident, or or do things like make massive changes to the website, and we want to make sure all those uh, links don't break internally. Um, and then just sometimes computer contributors just accidentally type in a link incorrectly. You know, they they copy something uh, not fully, and they drop it into into a into a link, and it's missing a you know a, a .com or something or a .org, and that you know that that can help um, mitigate those uh, those those issues. So just like our previous workflow, um, we it's pretty pretty similar to the RM CMD check. Uh, Deniker, you want to yeah. Go over as this I mentioned, one. Yeah, as I mentioned, like first first nine lines are boilerplate, like right? name of the re name of the workflow, what are the events, what's the job name, where should it run, etc. This time we're not using a container, and I tell you why. Because on line 10, we're using a action. So an action is just a series of steps that is developed by someone else. And so this is a, an action called Litchi. Litchi is a uh, small tool that we use because it's highly performant. And it is used for detecting uh, broken links or broken uh, URLs, right? Um, and so with that, we'll be able to use that same action with a bunch of parameters that are defined by that action. So here we're saying fail the job on line 13, fail the job if one or more links are broken. And then there's you know line 14 and 15 talk about, and 16, 14, 15, and 16 talk about what kind of summary you want. Uh, based on you know the links, the broken links that have been discovered, and then there's a bunch of arguments that uh, we can define for for the actual command line interface that is used by Litchi. And then finally, on line twenty, we have a generic uh, GitHub token that is generated during each workflow. We'll not go too deep into that, but that is sort of like a credential that is used for reporting purposes uh, and for other purposes. So yeah, we, so basically, the the crux of this is that we're using line 10 and 11 are basically the the crux of this wherein we are using someone else's action at this point so there is a if you go to github.com slash lichiverse slash lichi action you will see the, that action in place uh, but yeah we'll use this action to basically detect broken urls all right and so the you know it's the same same process we're gonna that we just did for our cd check you know we're gonna copy the workflow from the presentation um folder to the .github folder, we're going to push up um, that change to GitHub and let the uh, let things get let GitHub identify where our links are broken. We'll fix the we'll fix that issue, and then we'll push it back up and hopefully get a green check mark. And we'll have implemented two workflows. So if I go to back to our Studio Cloud um, and click Project, and go down to Presentation, and go into Workflows. 
So remember, I'm in project presentation workflows. And I'm looking for the links.yml um, uh, file. So here I got links.yml. I just sorted by name. So it's just a little easier. Click on the checkbox, the, the old sprocket here for additional file commands. And I'm just going to do a copy to. And I'm going to move this links.yml file to the .github folder. All right. And remember, I already have this RMCD check that I moved in there earlier. And I'm going to move this new file here. All right. So remember, I went from, I went into the presentation folder, workflows, grab my links, hit the sprocket, did a copy to, went back to project and into .github and dropped that workflow in there. All right. And because I've just moved something that's being tracked with Git, Gets like, oh, you there's something new in this folder. Like, should we track it? And we do. And we are going to commit this. Uh, so we're going to commit this to our GitHub uh, repo as well. So this is going to be our second workflow. This is going to be our commit message. Don't feel like you have to use my same commit message. You can type in whatever you want. Um, so I'm just doing second workflow and commit it and then push it on up, all right? And right now, you know, my, you can actually already see it happening. Um, that green check mark actually disappeared in my pull request. And I just pushed up this second workflow and now it's actually rerunning both checks. So it's checking, it's doing the RMCD check, RCMD check. And now it's initialized and checking the URLs. Uh, and this one generally runs pretty fast. Uh, and we do want to fail. You know, there was there was a broken link that we staged in the package, so so that's a good thing. What we don't want to see is we definitely want to see this RFCMD check pass again. Um, but while that's uh, running through, um, we will find out what link broke. So this this little report that's given out, it's actually kind of neat. So. It, you know, there's there shows that there's five links inside the uh, whole package that are linked out, uh, and one of them broke. And one of, the one that broke is in our news.md file, and it doesn't really say what broke about it, but I can, you know, a lot of times I would say 90% of the time it's really easy that there was just a typo in the URL. Um, and if I come in here, I can see that you know this uh, in the news.md file, there's a .xcom there. So we just have to go in and fix that issue. So I'm going to go back to RStudio Cloud. And I'm going to fix that issue in the news.md file. And I'm going to clean up this area. So I'm just going to right click on this file and just hit close all just so I have a clean space. And I'm going to use my little broom to clear everything out. And if you don't know, this is a, a nice tip. There's this weird R cube here. And this, based on where your project directory is, is located, this project file, if you click on the R cube, it takes you back you know, to, the, to, to your, to your uh, directory that you have set. Um, or sorry, uh, where the project directory is set with this uh, .rproj file. So it's just a nice way to, to zip back, zip around the, the file space. So remember, the link that was broken was in the news.md file. So I'm going to open this up and give us a little more real estate. So I can see here that R pharma is, so if I run a preview of the, the oh, no, I don't want to do that. Let's not do, yeah, don't actually don't click the preview button. That, that might get a little wonky. Uh, I can see here that it's R pharma. And then the link for the R pharma website has the dot xcom. So I just want to fix that and save it. And then, you know, just like we did uh, previously, you know, we're going to do a commit. 
you know, with our change, you can see here the change has the 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 X removed, and that's what we're going to commit up. So this is going to be fix for links. I'm going to commit it, and then I'm going to push push this up to GitHub. And so right now I got the X here for my failure. I'm going to push up. Let's see if it goes quickly or not. So I'm going to go back to my pull request. Yep, and it's already starting to fire off. So it's got two checks running. So I've got you know, my new com commit, the fix for the links. We just took the x out of the .com. And oh, yeah, so the URLs one is a very fast workflow. So it, it actually fired off and already checked and was like, that's a legitimate URL. It works. And we now have uh, implemented those two checks. Do you want to show the summary of that as well? Sure. Is that in? Yep. OK. Yeah, so remember before we had the, um, Oh, and you can ignore this warning. This is something beyond our control right now. Um, but you know, we have a total of six links in the the package. All six, you know, are, are valid URLs, and we have no errors anymore. So if you if you recall, we had this at five and one, or sorry, five successful and one error, and that was the R pharma one. All right, back to the pull request. Oh, yep, so everything is successful. So all our checks have passed. We got our RCMD check, and we got our check URLs all passing. So I don't know, uh, we were we were planning like a couple minute break. Um, Phil, are you still? Um, I'm here. Uh, we were we were thinking of just a five minute break just so people could stretch their legs. Um, yeah, that's great. I, I totally agree. Uh, get up, stretch your legs, let the dog out, those types of things. And then we'll uh, I'll play some music just so people can know that a break's happening. And then uh, when the music's over after five minutes, we'll come back. Does that sound okay? Yeah, that sounds great. Awesome. All right. See everybody back here in about five or six minutes. Okay. And then uh, Deniker, are you back here? Yep, I'm here. Great, great. All right, so we're going to keep pushing through our workflows. We got um, six more to do. Uh, some of them will go fast. Some will take a minute, but I think all are valuable. Um, so our next workflow that we're going to uh, implement is a spell check. And I actually think this one is uh, really useful, especially uh, when you have a lot of industry-specific jargon uh, and acronyms. Sometimes people type in their acronyms a little bit uh, incorrectly or type in their jargon incorrectly and it's good to be able to have those words archived somewhere that you know the spell checker can look through and be like that's a correct word or that's a correct jargon or an incorrect jargon uh, you know if you work on software where um, users speak many different languages uh, you know that's a, that's also um, you know if, you, if English is the dedicated language for your package, like sometimes folks might not know your slang that you use uh, in English or you know might um, you know have some some just some differences in, in how to present something. Um, and then for me, the important part for this for the spell check stuff is when you're doing like a pull request review of someone's code, you don't really want to be looking so deep at people's spelling, and it's really nice when the computers can do that for you um, uh, with, with the spell check. So for this one, uh, it's it's actually only twelve lines that's been uh, created. Um, so Deniker, you want to um, walk us through uh, those the pieces of the uh, the spelling workflow? Yeah. So again, boilerplate stuff to line seven. Um, then starting line eleven, twelve. Those are the only two things you need to look at here. So again, we check out the repository and then we have a predefined action. Remember in the last workflow where I said, uh, you know, the Lichiverse action was responsible for doing spell checks. Similarly, we've built a an R action to do spell checks for you. So this is under the Insights Engineering Organization. Uh, I wrote this one myself. So this would be something uh, 
yeah, it's just a two line thing to include in your in your workflow. Um, but yeah, all it does is it installs the spelling R package, it runs the spelling R package against files that have been changed in your pull request. And it gives you a review of uh, everything that's changed uh, or in, any problematic spellings in your uh, in your files. Yeah, uh, so, yeah, thanks, Denikar. So, so we'll you know just like how we did with the first two pull, the workflows, you know, there's a um, inside our uh, files area, you know, inside our presentation, we have our workflows, and you know, we just have, you know, the spell check dot YML file, which is what we're going to copy over to our dot GitHub file or folder. So I'm just going to do the checkbox, go to my trusty sprocket and copy this to the dot GitHub folder and the subfolder workflows and save it on over. Okay. So I just went from um, you know, I just went from the presentation folder, went into the workflows, got my spell check, copied it over to the dot GitHub folder and into the workflows. Okay. And then, you know, just like we've been doing same rigmarole, same thing. Uh, we're going to commit this new update to this dot GitHub workflows folder. So this is going to be our third workflow. I'm going to commit this. Make sure you check it. And then push up. So that's going up to the develop branch. X out of all this stuff. And by the time I bet by the time I click on this, oh, maybe a quick little refresh. Yep. All right. So I made a change to the develop branch. It's to implement the spell check workflow. And I can already see, um, you know, that the check URLs links one fired off. Uh, we hope that the RCMD check also fires off successfully. And now we have a new check called spell check that's running through. So we we in the R package, you know, we made a couple little uh, tweaks to some spelling, or to, to one word that the spell checker is going to flag, and it's also going to flag some some jargon uh, that we some of the jargon we actually want to keep. So I think this one does take a second to run, if I remember correctly. I set out a new poll if you want. I guess you guys want to take that on Slido. Uh, there is a new poll called uh, "What is your level of expertise with CI/CD?" Oh yes, um, that presentation.yml file that you guys see in the .github workflows folder. Uh, yeah, that's something we we had staged already. Um, uh, that's for something uh, a little bit later that we'll we'll make use of. So let's uh, let's see how everything's firing off. So the RCMD check already uh, initiated and completed, and it's successful. URLs successful, and we're still waiting on this spell check. And the spell check failed. Okay, so failure is what we want. Uh, as you guys are probably picking up, you know, fail, fix, uh, pass. Uh, so here we're going to go into the detail section of the spell check and see what words uh, were found. So um, there's a couple issues. It's identified. So cover is an R package, and DevTools is an R package. Roxygen, I don't know if that's an R package or a typo. Uh, I mean, I think it's RO, all lowercase. Uh, but anyways, um, the things that we really want to hone in on are that it looks like linked is probably was meant to be linked in the news.md file. And then it looks like there's a TH somewhere in the readme. So we'll need to investigate that. So the first thing, let's fix the. Um, the link issue here in the news.md file. So if I go to our Studio Cloud and find my news.md file, so here, so I'm back in the project, top level, 
open up news.md. We'll make this a little more readable. And so I have CICD workshop 0 0.01, useful links, a few useful. And remember, um, it's you know this news.md, this number that's after that, that's the line number of the file. So I already know it's at line five. So if I come here, line five is here, a few useful CICD links have been put here and one broken link to R pharma. So just a little bit of a misspelling there. So that's that's the one that we wanted. So we save that. All right. And then there was another misspelling at readme.md. And that is, it looks like in the readme.md file at line five, there's a th. So let's see where that is. So I have the readme. Okay, so it doesn't like the date, it doesn't like the th on the date. So we'll just be easy and just erase that. All right, and I'll save that. So the other issues that were identified cover dev tools, Roxygen, strange phrase, test that. We're kind of like these th three of these are packages that are industry jargon. Strange phrase is just like a a made up industry jargon roxygen uh same thing with uh, i think that's for uh like a title for a workflow so to um i always forget this command so i'm gonna cheat and if you guys don't know uh we did you know in the readme we do have the exercises and the solutions uh that we're working through um i'm gonna use this and uh Deneker, do you mind posting this in chat um this uh command. So we're going to use the spelling package update word list. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to paste this. So this is the spelling package. We're using the function update word list. So there's there's five words that we didn't fix. Strange phrase, cover, roxygen. And we're going to run that. Okay. One thing is it doesn't like these uh, quotes. So I have to fix those. It looks like if you copy, <clears throat> copy and paste it, maybe be careful of the quotes. I run that, and it gives me a list of the of the um, words it's going to add to this word list. And you might be like, "Where is this word list?" So in the inst folder, the inst, if I click on that, there's a, a word list that the spelling package used uh, uh, to to check to see if words that you don't want to uh, cover. So we have words like CMD, pharma, cover, cyclomatic, strange phrase. These, you know, these got added, this got added. So this is a word list that we're saying these words are okay. Uh, like you don't, these aren't incorrect words. Okay. So now in our Git tab, we have three files that have changed. So we have to fix those three or commit those three. So I'll come over here. So my trick with using this, this IDE window is what I do is I click inside this window and then I hit control A. So it highlights all three files and I just click staged. So rather than having to go through each one individually. So I just, I just did control A and just clicked stage. Uh, the stage button and it highlighted all three of those and i can still go through and check you know what did i change okay i changed the date i fixed this link and i added new words to the inst word list file so fix spelling workflow do fix spelling all right so same 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 process we're going to commit and push up close out, X out of these little windows. And we should see, if I go back up to my pull request and go into my spelling, okay, it's already firing off here. Um, each, each workflow, the URLs, the CMD check, and the spelling are all firing off. You can see here, it's actually kind of neat. Um, you can see here this first workflow, um, you know, 
something didn't work out quite right. But here, when we fix this test, uh, it passes now. But when we did a second, uh, implemented a second workflow, there was another issue found. And then it kind of a neat little uh, history of what's going on inside the develop branch. All right, and then everything's firing off. Uh, and then so while those are running, I don't know, Denica, if you got any feedback from the poll or, or um, anything you want to add while uh, we wait yeah. for these little... Yeah, the feedback is uh, that we do have a lot of people who are experiencing this for the first time. So we, we are definitely uh, you know, covering the right, we're taking the right boxes in terms of what we want to show in terms of workflows and things like that. So uh, I think the pace is pretty good. All right, and then, so these are these are firing off, and boom, everything is successful. So our URLs were checked again, our RMCD check was fired off and successful, and our spell check was successful. And remember, like you can customize the spell check uh, to to help with like, especially with industry jargon. Um, with the Admiral uh, package I work on, there's a lot of specific terms that no one knows outside of the specific area of pharma uh, that I, that I work in. Um, but it's really important for us to have this, you know, a common uh, language um, and make sure those acronyms are correct. Um, so we did our three workflows. We're going to do our next one. All right. And we're going to, you know, implement uh, a code style uh, workflow. And I think this one's important because, you know, it, it's everyone has an opinion about how to style their code. And then sometimes when you're rushing to finish a project, you don't always successfully style your code how you think you should. Um, or maybe you're just exhausted and you don't want to, you know, use everything uh, the, the way, you know, folks in the development project thought you should. Uh, but we can get around that. We can actually implement an action that helps us uh, guide our code to, to a certain style. So, um, I think also having a certain style at your code just makes it more legible for your developers. So you kind of know, like, you know, how things are indented, if something's indented, why that's indented, you know, spacing is all, all the same throughout the whole function. It just increase, increases readability. Uh, again, if you're not having to fuss over the style of the code when you're doing a pull request review, um, you know, with a new contributor or like some, uh, um, or, or a recent contributor, or sorry, not a, a a veteran contributor, you know, you don't have to fuss over this um, style. You can be like, well, this is the convention we decided it's being automatically checked. You know, you just got to fix it real quick. So with the code style, um, Dinecker, do you want to take, um, review the, the workflow? Yep. Yeah, boilers, boilerplate stuff to line seven, actually to line 10, right? Same stuff. You just initialize the workflow. You you know use a container, run it on your Ubuntu machine, check out the uh, the repository, and then line eleven is you know installing Styler itself as a package. So if if the Styler package is not installed, then install it. And line fifteen, line fourteen to sixteen is actually run Styler against the entire package. Uh, so we want to basically say. Um, you know, there's a dry option wherein it attempts to check if there are any unstyled files, and then it basically um, determines if there are unstyled files and fails the workflow and tells you which styles are unfiled. Uh, sorry, unstyled. So basically, we we also run these in different shells. So we're running this on an R script shell because there actually are commands, and so yeah, that's noteworthy in lines 13 and 16. Uh, but yeah, very simple. Install the package and run style package with the dry option set to fail. Uh, and yeah, let's let's see how this works. Yep. So we're gonna take um, you know, just like we've been doing in the presentations folder. We're taking the workflow called style.yml, and we're just gonna copy it to our .github workflow folder. So hit the checkbox. Trusty sprocket doing a copy to, and then in my .github folder in workflows, gonna copy style over. 
All right, so remember, I went, I first went to presentations, workflows, uh, checkboxed it, and then copy to to the dot GitHub workflows folder. So it's uh, this is already here. All right. So again, you know, same same process. Uh, definitely a broken record. Uh, Going to add this workflow up to GitHub. So this will be our fourth workflow. Going to commit it and push it on up. And you know, I have my lovely green checkbox up here that. I know and love, but all of a sudden, because I made a new commit, GitHub is going to fire off the fourth workflow, and we are confident that uh, you know the first three that we've implemented are going to are going to be successful, but this style one is going to um, fail. Well, we hope it fails. So, and I believe. Um, the culprit is going to be in the hello.r file. I actually don't remember at this very moment, but we'll see. We'll let uh, Styler find it for us. So it's actually kind of interesting to see how you know it's you know, following this this the step of the steps that we gave it. So like with the Styler workflow, it's you know creating this container uh, in, right here. And then it's setting up the job. Oh, OK. So it installed Styler, ran Styler on the code, and it failed out. All right, so if we go down, we can see. So it looks like, and this, this, this is hard to read, but it looks like the file hello.r uh, is the culprit. So it doesn't really give us any information on what the culprit was. Just This is just how we had it set up. You can definitely get more information, how you set up your workflow, on, on what the particular issue is. We can just go in and run the styler package. So what I'm going to do is just do styler colon colon and style file. And I know the culprit is the hello.r file. So I'm just going to, in quotes, do capital R, hello.r. So this is, you know, the hello.r file is in the, the, the folder R. And I'm just going to run this command. And it's saying that we did do it, that Styler did go in and change your file. So, you know, but what did it change? Well, that's the great thing about, um, you know, this little Git tab is we can go in and see what what it changed. So it doesn't like Styler doesn't like the convention that's enforced in style Styler package is that it doesn't like the space uh, in between the quote and the parentheses. So it's saying like oh we don't like that and we're gonna change that for you because that's the convention that we've you know are adhering to with the Styler package, which I believe is the tidyverse style guide. So it just made that quick little change for us. And we're just going to fix that style. All right, so again, I'm going to commit, going to push up, close out and X out of all these things. So we just fixed the hello.r file. And we, what we want to see is you know, we just we implemented our fourth workflow. There was an issue that that was detected by the workflow, the Styler workflow, and then we just implemented a fix. So again, all four workflows now are, are running over our package, and you know, just re-verifying links are good. Uh, the spell check is still solid. The package still builds successfully, um, and now we're making sure our style conventions are up to up to snuff. All right.
And I think with, um, with the way we have it set up in the Admiral package is that it actually gives you a list of files that it recommends um, styling being done on. So you don't even have to go in um, that the way that Deneker and his team have set it up for us in Admiral, it's like it just gives us feedback immediately in the action. But we didn't set that up in this workflow today. Um, but you know, there's there's more customizations you can add to your to your workflow to make it more, more powerful. Mentioning if, if somebody tried to do this on their own repository, uh, how do they start or kick off the GitHub actions? Does that happen by default? Like if you well, if you put your work if you put a workflow inside the dot GitHub uh, folder under workflows, GitHub detects um, that workflow and then and then initializes it and it runs through it. It kind of gets a little tricky when you you know I think my experience is like trying to tweak other people's workflows is the best way to start and to kind of get familiar with the process before you go out and write your own workflows. Deneker, you got anything? So I think uh, as long as you're, I think the question was, Phil, correct me if I'm wrong, whether it's possible to run GitHub Actions on any repository without setting anything up, then yes. Like as long as your repository is public, it should be able to run workflows without any cost to you, uh, at zero cost to you, because uh, ultimately GitHub is going to use your repository to train GitHub Copilot. Uh, so as long as you check out a repository, use their machinery, they're going to they're going to use some of your data, maybe directly or indirectly, right? Um, the private repositories you do get charged. Um, I think I think GitHub makes a lot of money based on enterprise organizations that use GitHub workflows on a regular basis. Uh, and they do have a uh, very strong billing, very, very tight billing strategy for that. Um, and also the fact that uh, you get charged two times to run Windows workflows and 10 times to run Mac workflows. So they make a lot of money based on that as well. Uh, so yeah, that's why we use Ubuntu latest for all of our operations for this, for this, uh, for this workshop as well as in real life, because we, we don't really want to spend enormous amounts of money for Windows and Mac machines. Yeah, beautiful. So I, I think that one of the key messages is if you're building a, a, a CRAN package or an R package and you have the source code publicly on GitHub, you, you can kick these things off for free. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah, perfect. And, and you can also run checks for, on Windows and Mac for free as well. Um, like, but you probably have a certain limit, rate limit on how many times you can run that. So you get 2,000 minutes per month for Windows and Mac collectively. So uh, for us on, on, uh, on the project I work on, we're, we're trying to just run Windows and Mac checks at the end before we release to CRAN. So we have all these checks running on all the PRs that are going through, but we don't have Windows and Mac until the very end uh, just, to, just to save that, that time limit. All right, so we'd, we got our four checks running. So URL, CMD, spell check, styler. So now we are going to keep moving onto our, uh, oops, I guess our, our things got missed up here. Uh, oops. Well, anyways, we're gonna move on to our, our fifth work uh, workflow, the linter. So as, as Deneker uh, talked about earlier uh, with like, you know, what is a linter? And it's a static code analysis uh, that can be performed without uh, compiling the code. Um, and this lets you spot little specific bugs. Um, and then if you have certain code practices that you want enforced, um, like maybe you don't want to have uh, so many nested if statements within your function, maybe you want to have a redesign or rethink of your functions if someone's doing uh, 15 if statements inside their function. Uh, this is a phrase I didn't know uh, until I came to the Admiral project uh, with software development, but it's called cyclomatic complexity. And it's something you can set within the linter, which we'll actually see that we only want a certain level of nesting to go on inside our function. So now we got our linter uh, workflow, which Deneker, you want yeah, so to? Is, yeah, this one's a little unique. There's a little more stuff here. So again, boiler stuff, boilerplate stuff to line nine. And then there's line 10, which actually adds a additional parameter to the checkout action, wherein we want to check out the entire 
repository with its complete Git history. So the reason we're doing this is to compare between commits, what are the changes that were happened to, to assess what files were changed. And this is used by an action known as Superlinter. So Superlinter is this amazing tool that GitHub has built, which give you a collection of linters for various programming languages. Uh, and they have some cool features like annotations and things like that, which we'll show you in a bit. But here we can specify, you know, linting for R packages, linting for, you know, YAML files, markdown documents, uh, any programming language that you can think of, Rust, Ruby, uh, Julia, whatever it is, Python included, are all bundled into this one Docker image that GitHub has produced. Uh, and so with that, we are specifying a bunch of environment variables, which are basically options for the super linter. And so with line uh, 14, we're saying don't validate all code base, just validate the files that have changed within the workflow. And then only validate our, our files uh, or run the uh, R linter package. So L-I-N-T-R package. Uh, and then there's a bunch of default, um, default branch GitHub token and produce an error if there was a lint error found on line 18. So this is just saying, you know, these are various configurable things that I think they have like maybe 50 plus options. Uh, we're just showing you five, which are relevant for the small package right now. Okay. And so, um, same, same process. We're just going to bring over our, in our presentation folder, our workflow called linter. So just going to copy over into our dot GitHub workflows folder and drop that in here. So same thing we did, we've been doing just, you know, go into presentation workflows, the little sprocket with the copy to and move it to the uh, dot GitHub folder. Okay. And so I have my linter dot YML file stored in here. Git is tracking it now. And we are going to push this guy up to, so this is our fifth workflow, All right? So we're going to push this up to GitHub. All right. And now we are going to, uh, sometimes you might need to refresh the screen here. It's interesting. It's already checked the workflow. Sometimes, you know, I don't understand how this stuff works, but it will refresh certain parts of the screen. Uh, you might just need to refresh the whole screen to see the fifth workflow kicking in. So now we're running, we're still running our four other workflows that we just successfully implemented. And now we're going to lint uh, the code base. Um, and, and that's going to fire off. So something that's really cool about this uh, that Denica was showing me the other day is that the super linter um, will actually go into the section. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll highlight this in just a second and files changed. So if you don't know this, this is a neat, uh, really neat feature of GitHub is you can actually click on files changed and you can see what's been, you know, plus being added, the little yellow dot being like modified. So you can see here, this was our original um, setup for the news.md file. And this is what we've changed over in this PR based on our modifications that we've done. Um, you know, our hello.r file being modified here. So with the super linter uh, being, being uh, utilized, and we'll hopefully see it real soon, is it actually is going to make little annotation uh, bubbles inside uh in, inside the uh the files change uh sections and we can and it will say like this is the problem this is what's going on with this uh this is why we failed your your linter all right so so we can go into the detail section but i think it's also nice to see what's failing in the linter all right so here so this is a really contrived example but we have this this function called linter uh, example, and it just has a bunch of silly nested if statements going through, going through it, and it's just we've set the cycle climatic complexity uh, to two, and it's identifying the super linter is identifying this issue um, uh, uh, within the function itself. So before we you know we haven't done anything locally, it's just run this action and identified this issue uh, for us. I think that's the only one. Yeah. 
So, so the linter x function is just a silly contrived example to to fix to fix that issue. Uh, we're just going to remove two uh, two if then or if statements. So if I go into my R folder and I pull open my hello.r file. So just to make this easier, I'm just going to right click on hello.r and just say close all others just to clean things up. Just so I have a nice fresh area. And I'm going to look for the function linter x. There's only two. There's only two functions in this file. And all I got to do is just remove these two lines. Right? And then I got to make sure the, the RCDO IDE is really nice and says, wait a minute, those curlies are not matching. Let's get rid of those two. And sometimes if your code is, 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 is really large, uh, your code base is really large, it's really good to run, you know, you can run the linter package here uh, to see if there's any issues uh, going on. You can like lint, I think it's lint package. Uh, I'm not going to run that, uh, but it is you can run it locally uh, to to check your linter, to check your code against your linter, which if you want to see, there is a dot linter file here where those things like the cyclomatic complexity is set. All right. But we're just going to let GitHub do all the work for us. So, do, you want, do you want to style this file before you commit it? Ah, good call. OK, so I just um, remember I just uh, removed some things uh, from here. And there might be some style issues. So how to do that is I can just do style styler, style file. And it will run through and style that function just in case, because I just made an update. And it's just going to make sure all my styling is adhering to the conventions I've established. And I actually can't tell what it did, but it did something. Good catch, Deniker. That would have actually failed our styler workflow. And, and it, I can't actually tell what it styled, but um, it. Uh, Linter, but it did something. Yeah, it's just good to restyle the file after you've made some changes. So let's send this guy up. All right, and GitHub, you can already see GitHub has detected a change already and it's refreshed. It's asking to, to refresh. I'm just going to go into the pull request. And so all five are firing off again. URL success. Um, we'll let these guys work on through. Sorry, I was just reading chat. There's another poll if you guys want to partake in that that I've set up in the meantime. Uh, this one's called, which CI CD platform does your org, team, group, or institution use, if any? So yeah, while this runs, it'd be nice to get that, uh, get that going. So we are almost done with our fifth workflow. Hopefully it's successful. I have a quick question. Sure. Uh, before, before you showed uh, on GitHub how you compared the link suggestions to the original code, where did you do that? Where where it, it flagged the the change, yeah, um, on GitHub. So inside the files change tab here in the pull request, okay. um, there's four little tabs up here. If you click on that, um, it won't show anymore because I already fixed it. 
but if there's any linter issues, it will annotate it uh, in that file. So like for us, it was the uh, hello.r file that was problematic. Yep. And it, it had a little annotation right here saying like your cyclomatic complexity is set to two, but this has four, um, you need to fix that. All right, thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, why, why do you see two side by side? I only see one. Oh, um, that might be. Um, yep, that setting. Yep. Is it this one? Yep. So if I do display the rich, so it looks like these these are the buttons that toggle that. Um, oh, so you can do unified and split. Yeah, so this is where it is. So if you do the sprocket, and I have it as split. So uh, all right. You... Yeah, that's what I was missing. Thanks. Yeah. No, this this is a great one. I feel like this is when whoever I don't know people always show me all these amazing things. And when they showed me this, I was pretty wild, like side by side comparison. Yeah. And it even like highlights, you know, it gives you like the green line, but then it also gives you exactly where that change is occurring, which is such a powerful tool for like our human eyes to, to focus in on the change. Okay, so we got all five implemented. We're going to move on to our sixth one. Man pages, manual pages, documentation, the good stuff. Um, it's, I think uh, this is such an important part of any software development project, but probably the one that's the most painful, trying to keep it up to date um, and in and, and, and sync. Uh, can get tedious. Uh, making updates to documentation can always be, you know, the least fun part of your your uh, uh, package development life. So, we have a workflow that kind of helps uh, automate that to kind of minimize having to remember to run it all the time. It's just like a poke to say, like, hey, did you did you update your documentation? Um, you know, we want to make sure that you know if you have a large bunch of a group of contributors. You know things can get out of sync real quick with who's using what different uh, Roxygen 2 package. So if someone's using a slightly older version of Roxygen 2, that can actually play a little havoc with your documentation when you're loading it up onto GitHub. So it's good to to enforce the same package, uh, Roxygen 2 package across the group. Um, and this one actually uh, is a slightly more complicated one, uh, and also has emojis in it which uh, Deniker is a big fan of. So I'll let him uh, review this for us. Yeah, uh, boilerplate stuff, but this time there's more emojis. Um, so again, till line 10, it's like, you know, do everything, check out the repository. And then so line 11 to 19. So this is actually running on, this is a bash script. This is slightly different from what we've seen before. Uh, and so line 13, I'm not going to go too much into depth for that, but it is a security related thing that we're doing because Git introduced a security feature, which would otherwise cause the workflow to fail. Uh, lines four, line 14 is basically running the R oxygen 2 command. So this is the same thing as dev tools, colon, colon document would run for you. But under the hood, it's actually using a oxygen 2 oxygenized function, right? So uh, we're running R silently and executing R oxygen to R oxygenize with a bunch of parameters. And then what we do in line 15 through 17 is we check if anything has changed in the man pages or the description file. And we are detecting if something has changed because Git will detect that in, there is a file that has changed for either one of the man pages or description. And it will throw an error saying that the manual pages are not up to date because some files were modified by the R oxygen command. And then if everything looks good on line 18, I'll say manual pages are up to date uh, with a you know, halo emoji. And then uh, line 19 is just saying we run this in a, uh, a bash shell, right? So yeah, so we're detecting if something has changed because the documentation is not up to date. Uh, and we are, uh, we're causing a, workflow failure if the documentation has, or is, is, is indeed being changed by the workflow itself. Okay, and then, you know, just like how we've been doing, um, you know, with it, well, first to, to kind of, you know, in the R package, there's the man folder, 
And here, you know, the hello function, you know, with this Roxygen uh, documentation here, you know, as when we created the package, we, you know, Roxygen runs through and creates, you know, these little .rd files uh, for us, um, for, for, you know, for your users to, 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 to look through and kind of help understand how, how to use your function. So for us right now, uh, we're just going to implement the workflow that checks to make sure that our .rd files, our man, manual pages are all up to date. So if I go into workflows, presentation workflows, find the roxygen.yml file, same process. Probably going to, I'm just going to flow through this pretty quick. Uh, save this Roxygen workflow. All right. And then I'm going to push up to GitHub this roxygen.yml uh, file. So what, is this our sixth workflow, workflow or fifth? I'm getting a little confused. I think this How many is files? Six, this is sixth one. Is the sixth one? Sixth workflow. All right, I'm going to push this up. And within my pull request, we're letting um, GitHub identify the issue with the documentation. So we got our six workflow firing off here. So it's running through the URLs, the linters, the Roxygen, spell check, style check URLs. Um, I think I just said that one. Uh, for for that for our package, so this um, Roxygen one should fail. Uh, if you didn't notice it, you maybe you caught it while we were doing this. But the in the man folder, you know we have two ex. So in our package, we have two exported functions: the hello function and this lint lint x linter x function. And you notice that in our .rd file, we only have the hello .rd file or man page being created. So you know, we, we made a mistake with our documentation. Um, and here, it's already, it's already flagged it as something's out of date. So the way Deneker wrote the, the workflow is it's just flagging what the issue is, um, that they're not up to date. So we can just come in here and make those workflow or make those man pages uh, up to date. And I'm just going to use DevTools. Great package document. And we'll see that a few files have changed. Notably, that the linter x now has a manual page created, a .rd file. And it's also, because it's an exported function, the namespace changed too. So we're going to push those guys on up. So fix documentation. Can you share one more time the R code you ran for that one? Yeah, so dev tools, colon, colon, document. So this is, this is like a wrapper around, uh, literally says wrapper for the Roxygen2, Roxygenize um, function. So this is the one the workflow is using, and we're just using the, um, DevTools package. I, I find uh, a lot of the DevTools functions are, are wrappers around uh, other functions that just make it hand, an easier development uh, process. So, and I just run that. I think, well, yes, yeah, so when I run this again, there's not really any updates um, being done because I haven't changed anything. OK, so uh, fix for documentation. Commit that. So I commit it, push it up, and go back to our pull request. And we will see it uh, hopefully successfully uh, fix our documentation. So this is really nice uh, for, for us. Uh, on the Admiral project, you know, we have uh, several package down websites that are really powerful to show your users how to use your functions, um, show show them, e you know, easily be able to see examples uh, on the internet rather than having to go through and find the manual page um, for that specific function. They can also just, it's really easy to navigate the package down sites. 
and keeping those reference files, those manual pages up to date can be, be challenging. And I think, you know, if you have a large con contributors or even just like, you know, if, if it's a small project, you know, being able to have these easy reminders to, to keep your documentation up to date, can, you know, just keep your project fresh, keep your users happy and keep, keep things moving along. So great news is the Roxygen um, action fired off and was successful. And we're just waiting on these other three um, to finish out. And then we got two more workflows to implement and then we'll be done. Okay, everything has successfully passed. And we'll get on to our seventh workflow. And this this workflow is is you, you know another one that you can really tailor to to help with your with your code base, but um, you know especially it's good to have great. I mean, I think you want to have as much test coverage as you can for your package. So I mean, I, I don't know, I don't want to name a number, but you know the higher code coverage, I think the more confidence your users could have um, with your package. Um, you know, but also it kind of depends on how you write those tests. Uh, you know, for just like if they're really detailed in-depth um, tests. So, but I think the biggest thing is that when you have really good test coverage on your package, it really builds user confidence uh, for your package that, it, you know, that, you know, even if you find, if there's some bugs, you're implementing tests to catch those bugs or that you've implemented a fix for that bug. And then you now have a test against it. You know, I think that's a way to build better and better confidence that there's this co continuous cycle of updating increasing your test coverage, little issues come up, you're testing against those, those issues. Um, for us, for this workflow, it's, a, it's, it's gonna be a little different. We're not gonna get a, um, the way we've, we've set it up and denigrate if you wanna take over um, in just a second. Um, the way we set up the workflow is it's not gonna give us a, a, a failure. It's just gonna show us how much coverage we have for the package. And then we're gonna uh, increase the coverage just a little bit. Yep, exactly. Uh, and so this is, again, boilerplate stuff till line 10. Uh, line 11, 12 are installing the cover R package. Uh, and then line 14 and 15 are actually running the package coverage, which will give you a report of, um, of, of all of the test coverage that is being covered by the individual tests for your respective R objects. So it could be functions, classes, whatever you have it will show you a percentage number to say that X, Y, Z percent was uh, tested for this particular package. And so actually, if you run that locally, Ben, I would be curious to know what the current coverage is. So just the cover package coverage um, function, yeah. And you can see that only 33% coverage exists on this particular package uh, for the hello.r file, right? So right. Let's, try to, let's try to see the same results within the workflow now. All right, and just like we've been doing, you know, work in the presentation folder, we're gonna grab the workflow uh, called coverage. So going into the presentation workflow coverage, our trusty sprocket, mm. we're gonna copy to our .github folder and save that. Okay. And then, um, so, you know, just like how we've been doing, you know, presentation workflows, copy the, the, the workflow over to uh, .github workflows. You'll see it being tracked in the Git tab. We're gonna oops, refresh. We're gonna track this. And we're going to do seventh workflow. All right, and we're going to push up. We're getting so close to being done uh, with eight workflows. So we push that up. And then, you know, again, this is going to fire off, but it's not going to give us a, um, a fail. But what it is, there's ways to customize this to give you a report within your pull request, like having a, a little. Um, box showing like, you know, the line coverage of all the tests. So I think this is a powerful feature 
if you have a user or a new contributor who's adding a function in, and maybe they don't test all parts of their function, and, and you can view this test coverage report and be like, oh, you know, please increase the test coverage before we you know, review your, your function um, as just like a good practice. So when this, when this test coverage um, action completes, you know, we're going to have the same kind of report at the end here. But this, this is nice too, because as a, maybe as, the, as a lead on a project, you don't have to pull someone's branch down and do a coverage on their um, a co coverage report on, on their their uh, their new function they're implementing. You can instead just use, rely on GitHub to help uh, identify the coverage issues. So it's already so see here the test cover. So this is where our rule is being uh, is being violated. So now we've implemented this workflow and it's actually passing this first time. But what we really want to see is. Um, to run coverage. So, so here I've, I'm in the coverage action. I go to run coverage and I scroll down and I can see the same output that was in the console, the RStudio console, with just saying there's 33% uh, test coverage. All right, and so for our fix for this, we just want to bump up our test coverage. Um, to fix this issue. And to do that, and we'll post this in chat, but I'm just gonna, because of time, we just wanna copy this, um, this test that we wrote for linter x, so this other function we have. So I'm just gonna copy this. Jennifer, did you post that in? So this, we're just gonna add this to our test file. So I'm just gonna copy this in our project area, our test area, and test that, and test hello.r. So we only have our one test running. I'm just going to add it in. So this is just a test for linter x. Um, I run my two tests just to make sure they're, they're working. Because this is such a small package, it's really quick that I can run the tests very fast. And then I can also just do a coverage report, see our increase. Yay, now we got 100% test coverage. So, so that's something to, to think about. Um, there's ways to structure the GitHub action. And we're going to push this up and let GitHub also show this the report. But you know, if you a new contributor comes to your project and implements a new function, and it drops your test coverage, you know, you, there's ways to customize the workflow to give you like red flags, like, hey, like this person's implementing this new function and they're not testing everything and it's dropping our test coverage significantly. So just nice re little red flags. So let's push that up. Fix for test. Uh, ben, do you mind showing the part where you added the test again that increased the coverage from 33% to 100%? Yeah, so um, let's see. So Deniger posted uh, in chat this uh, test that Linter X is surprised. So I just grabbed that uh, from the readme, uh, copied it, and within the project, there's the test folder. So I went into test, test that, test hello.r, and brought that up. And I just dropped it at the end of the file here. And I believe what uh, Deniger posted in there is also, uh, it's a little harder to read. Let's let's not use that method, the readme.md method. So yeah, so so the test that Deniger posted uh, in the uh, um, chat is what we want to use in the test hello.r file. All right, and unfortunately, you know, it, it does break our rule that you know the first six workflows we had it break. This one is just we didn't have it break. We just kept it simple. There's definitely ways to customize it to 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 
to to showcase issues with either decreasing test coverage or missing test coverage, uh, but we didn't want to lose uh, to get too much into the weeds there. So, so we now have all of these workflows running through our package, checking things. You know, six of them would give us immediate feedback if something was breaking test coverage. We'll just investigate that one real quick and double check that we got the same thing locally. So 100%. So we are almost done with this workshop. We just have one more uh, workflow. And this one, I think, is, you know, you know, our packages, I think, are this beautiful thing that, you know, encapsulate like testing, documentation, uh, and 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 functions all in one place. Um, but sometimes the R package can be a little hard to read if you're using R Studio. Um, you can pop things out, uh, pa uh, package documentation out, and have it on a separate page to read through it. But I think a powerful infrastructure that's been developed by like R Studio and the folks with Tidyverse is this package down ability to publish a site just based off your package. And we're going to do that with our 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 contrived package here. Um, and you know, I think why I think these are such a powerful, you know, besides what I just said, um, uh, package down site, why this workflow is so powerful is that gives your users a place to go to, ensures that you know your internal documentation is always being kept in sync with your external documentation, so things aren't getting out of out of sync. Um, and then here, good documentation is like pizza. When it's good, it's good. When it's bad, it's still better than nothing. And I can I can really relate to that. So. Um, so we're going we're gonna to just show you guys how to take a workflow that Deniker wrote uh, that can just help us publish uh, a quick package down site to our personal repo. And this one you know, is a little, more, a little more involved. Deniker, you want to take it away? Yep. Uh, so we hear, I think someone had asked previously, like, what are the different uh, triggers for a workflow? So here we're not doing all the same boilerplate stuff we did before because there's a new entry on line four, which says push to the main branch. That's when this workflow is also triggered. So here there are two uh, use cases where we'll run this workflow. One is during the pull request itself because the pull request is against the main branch. And the second is when a push is made to the main branch. So a push event is the equivalent of committing or pushing a new commit to a particular branch. So when we merge the pull request from devel to main, which you'll see in a bit, we will essentially be triggering a push event that will trigger this workflow to run on the main branch. Okay. And so, yeah, so lines five through nine or li lines five through 11 are pretty much the same as everywhere else. Uh, line 12 and 13 are basically building the HTML pages for your, for your package. So the package down package gives you a function known as build site GitHub pages, which will actually automatically generate beautiful HTML documentation for your package, right? And so uh, line 15 uh, through 20 is a little more unique for this particular um, workflow, wherein we have an if condition here to say that only if my GitHub event is a push event, that's when we publish our documentation to the GitHub pages branch. And what that means is that the HTML pages are generated by the previous step, which is the build site step. And these are pushed into another branch known as the GitHub pages branch, which we will, we will show you in a bit what it does and what it's intended for. And so we're using a third party action from Peace Iris. Uh, and uh, this is a really nice action, which will just simply take your content from a given file or folder and it will eventually push the same thing to, uh, it'll push the render documentation into the GitHub pages branch directly. Okay, uh, yeah, that, that I think that sums it up. You're on mute, you're on mute, Ben. Sorry, everyone. Um, yeah, so, uh, this one will will move quickly into the .github workflows folder, uh, and then we'll have to do a couple 
well, we'll walk you through a couple of settings you have to do within the GitHub repo itself. But this one, uh, presentation workflows, um, aptly named package down.yml workflow. We're going to copy to the .github folder. And then we're going to let GitHub uh, use this workflow now. So eighth and final workflow and push this up. So we're not gonna, you know, just like test coverage, we're actually not gonna like really fix anything in this part of the package. We just wanna deploy um, our package as a package down site uh, using some of the GitHub features available to us. So if I go back to my pull request, And we are waiting for things to fire off. Uh oh. Network error. I got all my workflows here. And it no longer likes that one. <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, there might be a situation where GitHub, you've either run out of free minutes, Ben, or uh, we've, uh, uh, we've sort of like overwhelmed GitHub with the workshop where everyone is trying to run GitHub actions and GitHub's freaking out and they don't have capacity for us. So uh, hopefully others have this workflow running for them. In the meantime, we'll, okay, cool. Aaron's workflow is running, so it's just you, Ben. Yeah, it's running for me. Bummer. Well, they don't like me, but I guess for this workflow, you know, it's really just um, it's really just to publish to GitHub Pages. So we don't. I could just merge um, it into main, and then we and could so that's set. One final, yeah, one final step we want to do right now. So we've we've added all of our workflows, we've tested them, and now, like, since everything is green, assumably, uh, we will just merge this pull request into main. So what we're now doing is triggering a push event. So this will cause a new workflow to run within main, which will trigger the uh, creation of the package down website and publishing into the GitHub pages branch. So yeah, pull the trigger when you, when you want. All right, I'm gonna confirm the merge. Here we go. Hopefully GitHub still likes me. All right, so that pull request, you can see it's been merged in. So I no longer have like a pull request one. Um, because we have a package down workflow in initialized, um, we should see um, a PR in a minute that will publish our GitHub um, pages website. You you have the workflow running right now. You can just view the progress for that, right? So this is the merge event that took place. This is the push event. Uh, as you can see, BMS sixty three pushed commit so and so into main, and so now this has triggered a publishing workflow now. I hope they don't kick me out of GitHub. In the meantime, right. I've activated a discussion on Slido. Uh, this is more about what you would like to see in an advanced version of the CICD workshop if we were to ever host one. Uh, so yeah, please feel to you know add your comments, thoughts, uh, any requests. Uh, feel free to provide any feedback as well. So we we would love to love to see that. Um, so uh, Denica, do I go into settings now to get? Uh, Let's GitHub let's pages. do this. Let's go to the GitHub Pages branch and see what's within that. Right, let's see if there is a new branch called GH Pages. You all should see a GH Pages after your workflow has successfully completed, after the merge, and let's see what are the contents of that. Right. So this this content is completely different from your R package. This these are basically HTML files and JavaScript assets and things like that. Right. So these are actually the content for your website. So you don't need to know what's going on within these, but what you need to do now is I think, yeah, you can continue Ben. 
the deep. So um, I need to go in and tell GitHub to make a, a website for me, basically. So I go into settings. So here I have the code uh, tab and all the way to the right, I'm going to go into settings. And on the left-hand side, there's a menu item called pages. I'm going to click on pages. And um, what I'm the only thing I'm going to change is where it says none. I'm just going to click that I want this to publish to GitHub Pages, the GitHub Pages branch. OK, and I'm going to click Save. And it takes uh, only um, maybe 30 seconds for because it's such a small site uh, for GitHub to uh, take that information that we've supplied it in GitHub Pages and build us a custom uh, website that's based off our, our, our package. Um, so sometimes, uh, oh, and we can see within the actions that this, so I've been, like you can see all these actions here are being uh, initiated by me, but now that we're doing a pages build and deployment, there's a new guy uh, in my repo called GitHub Pages bot, or just a bot who's helping to, to publish this website. So green check mark means that website was successfully created. And if I go to pages, you can see here that I now have, if you didn't notice, this wasn't here before, but I now have a new live site. Your site is live here. And if I click visit site, so things that things to note are, you know, we have the BMS 63. That's my username for GitHub, my repo with github.io and CI CD workshop. We have our package here deployed. You know, you, if you think back when, we have our two functions, our silly functions that we made, hello and linter x. Here, you know, we've we've we added, we fixed that. We added that when, when we fixed the Roxygen uh, documentation. You know, this got added here. Remember our change log with fixing the the link and the spelling issue, the 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 um uh, the broken URL link that was here. Uh, and we also, um, Deniger has made it so the presentation that's inside the R package also publishes as a tab. So if I right click here, oh, that did not deploy. Yeah, we, we didn't change anything in the presentation um, files itself. That's why we're not seeing that. So if you were uh, to like delete something or like add something to the presentation uh, uh, files, you should be able to see that. Actually, yeah, okay. what if, yeah, you can just do that directly from within the GitHub UI. OK, so just go in and just make a little change on the index.qmd file. Yeah. So so let's do, let's just change this to intro. That was not what we wanted. So if I go here to the pencil to edit, and I'll just type in intro to CICD workshops for an R package, commit the changes. Uh, yeah, the GitHub pages is from root. All right, and then, because we did a change in the main branch, um, we're going to have some actions uh, triggered again with the GitHub pages being rebuilt. And then it will also rebuild the website. Uh, and if worse comes to worse, because um, if you copy the template from um, the CI/CD workshop, you know, in the top right-hand corner, you know, we also built a package down website that uh, has the presentation linked at the top. It's going to be almost identical um, to to what you to what you guys are doing. And this presentation is linked there. So this is what I've been using the whole time. But there's a way to get back to it in case it doesn't work and everything. Uh, if you want to get access to the, um, oh.
so huh yeah i wouldn't so, worry uh, about it for, i wouldn't worry about it for now but uh yeah, yeah, sorry guys, we don't have the presentation uh, published to your local GitHub pages because we're gonna run out of time. Um, but yeah, so you know, just to just to you know quickly review, you know what we did. You know, we took a, a bare bones R package, and we you know implemented six really core workflows that, that can identify problems in your package, and then two additional workflows that kind of can that you know didn't flag things, but you could kind of, you can definitely customize it to help it, help flag uh, issues in your package. Uh, and then to help automate the publishing of the, uh, of the package to a package down website. Um, and then, so, oh, presentation works, great. Okay, it was just me. Um, but anyways, uh, I know we only got eight minutes left, but you know, th this was uh, my first time ever doing anything on on CI/CD stuff on a, on a workshop level. So I and I really wanted to do this because I've been fascinated by this stuff um, from working on the Admiral project. And Deniger was you know really kind enough to help you know build up this presentation with me and this uh, and the workflows. And so we have a um, yeah. So we we were excited to teach this. So Deniger, you want to add anything? Yeah, no, thanks everyone for participating and attending. I think there's a lot of good questions uh, and I think we'll do an advanced version of this at some point as well. Uh, so thanks for all the feedback that you guys gave and participating in the workshop. And hopefully this, uh, whatever you've learned, you can take away and start implementing it in your own organization. Uh, you, you can do the same thing with GitLab. You can do the same thing with Jenkins. Uh, at the end of the day, it's just different CI CD tools and products, but uh, the core idea is to implement CI CD for your packages so that you maintain quality as well as integrity of the package at all times, right? So when you when you have packages that you're deploying internally or externally, uh, CI CD is sort of like an integral part of the entire workflow. It just makes things easy, just gives you continuous feedback. Uh, and I'm sure like all of your developers will very much appreciate it. So yeah, thanks guys. Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, Phil, you want to close this out or? Yeah, totally. So when people leave today, there will be a survey, hopefully, that pops up asking you if you'd like to get your digital certificate for completing the workshop today. Uh, so just fill that out, and then we'll send out the badges here pretty soon, probably Monday, I'm guessing, uh, just because I don't want to do it over the weekend. Um, and then... Um, the only other thing I was going to mention is that the uh, Slido is going to be up for a day or two. So Dinakar and Ben, um, if people here want to ask questions there in the, in the Q&A, uh, feel free to keep that going there and then maybe just take a peek at it in a day or two. Um, but other than that, thanks so much for coming. This was really an amazing workshop. I, uh, I followed along the whole time and I loved it. So thanks so much for everything you did. And uh, yeah, we'll have the uh, Amazon machine learning workshop this afternoon if anybody wants to tag along for that. Um, otherwise, I'll see everybody at R and Pharma next week. It starts on Tuesday and we'll kick things off. So thanks again and uh, appreciate it.